Empathic uh, produces conversation analytics for life sciences, healthcare, and beyond. And we focus on AI empathy because all accurate understanding and conversation starts with empathy. I'm a licensed clinical psychologist by training and I have been spending the past 15 years of my life researching what are the exact words and phrases that lead to increased trust and empathy in conversations. We were talking with folks coming into the emergency department after a drunk driving accident and providing them 15 minutes of empathic listening. And we found that the folks that got the empathic listening had significant drops in their drinking and it held for three years. They had a 48% reduction in readmission just from being listened to and understood and like radically accepted for who they are in that critical moment. And when that happened, the hospital saved you know, millions of dollars, uh, care you know, increased massively. And so they said, okay, let's bring in all of these psychologists to listen with empathy. Someone needs to train them. So I was part of that team that actually ended up going around the country training people in empathic listening. What we found is that in a two-day workshop, you can't actually change your behavior and learn to listen with empathy. What people needed was coaching. They needed real-time feedback on how to change their communication behavior. And around 2008 is the first time where machine learning, natural language processing came onto the scene. And we said, could this be something where a psychologist could listen to and annotate these recordings for empathy, for these behaviors, and then give automatic feedback to the doctor in real time so we don't have this lag time and they can get coaching just like learning a sport. So we have about 200 different behaviors right now that we've modeled with AI from our psychologists that are now being deployed instantly. We have a detection of those 200 different behaviors and then a tip and then we actually tell them what to say to correct and get like back on course. If you think of things like diabetic monitoring, if a person is having a tough time with that therapy and they reach out to somebody for some help with that and they get a empathetic and um, open-ended questions and they're with a person who's giving them the help they need, they will continue using that therapy. RAI combines the experience of hundreds of doctors and so we've ended up actually being more accurate at detecting some of these things than humans because of that combined expertise. We know exactly the ratio of reflective statements to open-ended questions to affirmations that lead to improved healthcare outcomes, improved rapport and trust. This is backed by research. We know and understand the science of communication and we can model it. Grin hires really emotionally intelligent people, so it does really bolster um, the mission behind the company. She has an understanding of what needs are, of what customers need, but also just the environment she's created at Empathic is so collaborative um, and empathetic. She really shows the values of our company. Her main focus is on um, building trust and building these relationships with clients in ways that she can help them. We've been using the platform for about two and a half years. So as we were thinking about bringing empathy into the candidate conversation and into our product itself, it was really important to us to have a partner we could work with that was not just science-backed, but it was usable in a way that made sense to our customers. So one of our customers, um, actually here in Seattle, was looking to increase candidate conversions. So they were having a lot of candidates that came into their process opt to leave the process. So what we found in our metric that combines empathy powered by empathic, a few other scores around patience and fairness, we found that when that score um, was higher and hit a thir certain threshold, there is an 8% um, higher rate of candidate conversion, which was a big outcome for our customers. We were AWS from day one with our serverless cloud architecture, which meant when I would go to a customer that has, let's say, 20 million API calls in a day, I could instantly, as a very small startup, scale to, to serve the models there. We use ECS Fargate uh, for all of our model hosting and inference, as well as S3 uh, buckets and containers and DynamoDB. So we use the full suite to both build the models and run them in real time with inference. Security is extremely important to us. We have a HIPAA compliant uh, data pipeline where things are encrypted in transit and at rest. AWS makes our lives so easy and it's really nice too when we find a customer that's also on the AWS system because we can just connect our buckets on S3, get the system going you know, in minutes. Uh, and again, we know that it's secure, we know that it's fast and everything's working together. 
Even when we find a customer that's not on AWS, we can integrate them well because of the way that the system is set up for scalability. So we've been just really happy since day one. We were looking for purpose-built AI, very narrow use cases that are very powerful and that really involve needing an expert with a data set in order to produce something outsized and outstanding. And as soon as I talked to Grin, it started really clicking in that this is big. Communication is really complicated. I use my hands, I use my eyes, I use words, inflection. All of those things being read by another human is more challenging than we all believe. And one of the things that AI can do is really enhance that opportunity for a more robust connection. So every piece of data that we've collected is annotated by um, someone who maybe hasn't had the opportunity to be an AI. There's a lot of women building our models. That's starting at the level of the data all the way through. So every one of my investors is a female check writer. Our board is 100% women. Uh, all of our executives, they're female or non-binary or our BIPOC, person of color. And those are all choices that I made intentionally to build the company. And what happens when you do that, obviously we have research that shows that companies that do this perform better, but we have a better AI product. It's more robust and generalizable. It has more cultural attunement. You as an executive can choose to do that. I think those are very intentional choices that I made and I you know, wish more people would make um, to build better AI. The thing I am looking forward most to in an investment in Empathic is its impact. I believe it will have a very large impact. And the fact that it brings in this behavioral science perspective and, and is rooted in data is something that's really important to me. Most of my advice for women founders isn't for the founders themselves. It's for everyone else. We just need more support, I think, from the community. It does take that initial investor or an initial supporter or partner to say, of course you have this. But I will say that about female founders because we do get you know funding. I think it's like less than 2% of funding. What that means is we have to pitch way more. I'm a former founder myself, so I became intimately familiar as a woman founder with some of the unique challenges and barriers that women face in the startup space. And I decided to move to the investing side of the equation to help to remedy some of the inequities and disparity that exist in venture capital. So when we came across Empathic, it was very clear to us that the CEO, Grinlord, had a very deep understanding of the technology, really had that perfect combination that we look for of the domain expertise, as well as the, the technical knowledge to be able to inform those decisions. And right now, I'm focused on bringing empathy to everyone. So we work with uh, HR, sales, insurance, and most recently in the life sciences and clinical trial monitoring. Anyone, no matter where they are, could learn to listen with empathy, get feedback on things that maybe they've never received feedback on, self-train, and improve their listening. So this is just amazing where we're at with technology now, that in real time I can get feedback on that in a way that most people wouldn't have access to.